Hello? Aloha. Okay. Hi. I've never said hi like that before. Where'd that come from? Oh, well. Aloha again. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, boy, we're kind of a little thin group today. I don't, where did everybody go? We had a full house at, at 8 a.m., so uh, we'll see how, I see cars still pulling in, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. This is the third Sunday after Epiphany, and we are uh, bidding a, a fond farewell to Pastor A.J., who is going to be accepting a call to St. Michael's Lutheran in Wellington, Florida, and so he's going from one ocean to another, yeah. And, uh, and he's going to be sharing uh, God's word with us today in the sermon. So I look forward to that. We will begin with the gathering song, God's Work, Our Hands. The tune is familiar. It is Earth and All Stars. So I invite you to stand as you are able, and we will begin with the gathering song. work our hands working together building a future repairing the world raising up homes planting new gardens feeding the hungry and sheltering the cold bless God our hands as we work in your name sharing the good news of your gospel god's work our feet traveling together following jesus to places unknown walking as friends marching for freedom running the race with god's future the goal Bless God our feet as we follow your way, sharing the good news of your gospel. God's work, our voice, singing together, praising, proclaiming to all who will hear, praying for peace, shouting for justice, claiming God's love for the lost and the least. Bless God our voice as we speak in your name, sharing the good news of your gospel. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so, as we gather, we cry to the Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us.
Christ has had mercy upon us and washed away our sin, creating in us new hearts. And in response, we offer our thanksgiving and praise, and glory be to God in heaven. Pule Kako, let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the word. As we age, we have to change glasses. <laughs> Where are we? <clears throat> Our first reading is from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah at a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, 40 days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Please join me in your response. For God alone, I wait in silence. God alone is my rock and my salvation. And God is my deliverance and my honor. Put your trust in God always, O oh people. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. But they put on the scales together. They weigh even less than the breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though well known to you, set not your heart upon it. 
God has spoken once, twice. Have I heard it? Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. For now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. For the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. I was wondering if he's going to do the cakey story, because there's cakey. There's no, there's no story in the book. Oh, there's no story in the book. Okay. Well, then, then by all means, there's no story in the book. Where, where's the movie? We don't do the movie anymore? Huh. I thought, I thought there was always the movie back there. Okay, whatever. Let us pray. Open our hearts to feel you present. Open our ears to hear you. Hear hear you call invitation. Help us to make room in our busy and crowded lives, in a busy and crowded world, to follow you. Amen. So, uh, good morning. Um, I was with my family for the holidays on the mainland in uh, Florida, and this is my first Sunday back with you all. Um, So let me say, Happy New Year. Year. Thank you. Thank you. May it be a year filled with joy, wonder, and lives attuned to all the amazing and abundant blessings of God happening in our lives and around us all the time. So um, I made mention to a few uh, pastor-type friends that I was preaching this morning uh, here at Christ Lutheran, and they all immediately assumed, with questions and uh, exasperation, that I would be choosing a text other than the gospel uh, to preach on. Oh, not a great gospel on Sunday. You can always preach on Jonah or, or... Oh, the gospel is just the call of the disciples. Not much you can really do with that. Really? It's not in the book. 
<laughs> it's not it's, it's, it's not in the book. Not much we can do with this. Hmm. It 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 it, it makes me wonder. Um, it makes me wonder. Like w this is what we've come to. That this is what we. Oh, stop. Uh, that that's what we. Uh, that that's what we think about the call of Jesus. It's just not really that exciting or that important. I don't know. Anyway, um, it is true, however. It is true that we are at that awkward moment where there's sort of a seismic shift in perspective, right? Reflective of our lives around the end of the year holidays, um, our scripture readings for many weeks had been super energetic and emotional, right? From the building anticipation and excitement of Advent's readings to the miraculous and mystical and even melodious story of the birth of the Messiah. From the various traditional events that envelop the lives of the characters of the birth narratives to Jesus' otherworldly call at his baptism and the transcendent heavenly proclamation of God's beloved pleasure. Everything has been building and building, and the atmosphere and emotions have been up and up. And now, however, um, at home, all the decorations have been pulled down, and uh, at home, all the decorations uh, have been pulled down and wrapped in the same tissue paper uh, that they've been wrapped in since our great-grandparents were alive um, and put back in boxes and the boxes put back in cupboards. Things have returned to normal. Normal. Not a speck of holiday excitement, not, not a dash of building anticipation. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Most people I talk to, at least in this country, are looking forward to the unfolding events of 2024 about as much as they're looking forward to rectal surgery with a cheese grater and a flamethrower. No anesthesia. But that's another sermon. And, and another matter altogether. The challenge for us church folk is always to see God's extraordinary in the world's normal, mundane, even messiness. God's business is always extravagant, lavish, even prodigal, in contrast to humans, human secularism's exclusions and judgments and borders and greed. This is what scripture witnesses about our God. This is who and what the gospels tell us Jesus is. This post-Christmas January moment in time is precisely that intersection of God's astonishingly remarkable with our wearisome monotony. I'm sure you'll want to preach on something other than the gospel. No. No, not at all. That's not the least bit true. Because wearisome monotony, normal, is exactly where the gospel comes this morning, right? Regular, everyday life, normal life, politics and money, the haves and the have-nots, the struggle for power and the struggle to survive, to make a living, to eke out a meager existence while the world spins wildly out of control. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came. A punch in the gut to everything that screams temporal power 
and persistently through time and space tries to dehumanize, victimize, and erase us. John, for all the reasons the world had to quiet his voice of tenacious hope and pastoral empowerment, is now removed from the story he was briefly part of, demonstrating once again to every reader that has ever known oppression and suppression that dissent in any fashion will not be tolerated. Power structures demand conformity, assent, obedience, and acquiescence. But his removal, although surgical in its precision, is not only mitigated, but it is confronted with the coming of God's beloved. Two words, Jesus came. Change everything. Change everything for the story. Change everything for John. Change everything for you and for me. Change everything for history. Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying the time is now. The reign of God has come. Let your heart and mind be turned from the things of this world and look upon your God. Behold your God. See the face of your God who has come to you to be with you. Now this is Jesus' subversive message. It is a subversive message of authorization and commission for you and for me, for us to stop listening to the world's words of prejudice, judgment, criticism, and condemnation, to stop participating in the world's works of injustice and inequality, and to be seen and to be heard, and to be valued, and to be valuable in our creative participation in God's redemption, God's overturning of the world's broken power structures and systems of indignity, inequality, and inhumanity. Jesus' proclamation, his good news, is both promise and invitation to each and every one of us to be totally free and totally committed. Free from the despair of meaningless existence and the unending struggle with temporal authorities whose only love then and whose only love now is cruelty and selfish gain. And committed committed to life, all life, and to humankind, our friends, and our neighbors, and especially, especially those most vulnerable, those most damaged, those in the most need, here and everywhere. The first disciples of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark are situated profoundly in life's wearisome monotony, just like us. In the place they know, with the people they know, doing all the things that they know how to do, the crazy and dangerous world spinning wildly around them, they exist. Life is precarious. Government and rule are agonizing. Philosophy is complacent. Theology, relatively uninspired. Things are as normal as things get for these folks. 
And it is into this moment that God who is present in Jesus, the God who came to enact redemption and turn the world upside down, speaks to them. Come and follow. Not stay put. Come and follow. And speaks to us. Come and follow. Now the voice of the world, the voice of the world says, get in the boat. Get in the boat. Set out to sea or you won't eat. You know that voice. I know that voice. We've heard that voice our entire lives. But Jesus, Jesus changes the rhetoric from fear and scarcity to abundance and community. Follow me and gather together with all of your sisters and all of your brothers and all of your siblings and together we will live with God for God and we will change the world with love. Come and follow. Right now is precisely that intersection of God's astonishingly remarkable with our wearisome monotony, our normal, and our shared adventure in following Jesus and living out his subversive message of love, acceptance, value, and empowerment continues. But it's going to continue differently. I want to thank you all so very much for welcoming me and letting me be part of this discipleship life with you all these last three years. It has been a life-giving joy. And I will be forever grateful to all of you. Of course, your call to follow Jesus continues in this place as part of this wonderful community of hospitality that is safety and serenity and visibility for so many. My call to follow Jesus is taking me elsewhere to continue walking with U.S. Navy sailors as a Navy Reserve chaplain and also to accompany the good people of St. Michael Lutheran Church in Wellington, Florida, as their pastor. Please know that I am taking you all with me in my heart. I pray that I will be able to love them even half as much as you all have loved me from the bottom of my heart. Mahalo nui loa. And although I might be on a different shore, the challenge for us church folk is always the same. To see God's extraordinary in the world's normal, mundane, even messiness. God's business is always extravagant. Always lavish, even prodigal. This is what the scriptures witness about our God. This is who and what the gospels tell us Jesus is. Astonishingly remarkable. Meeting us. Confronting the world. And even on different shores we follow together. And we change the world with love. Amen.
You gonna announce the hymn? Yeah. Unless you want to. I have a flamethrower. Chieko, is there a cheese grater in the kitchen? I don't know. No? Okay. Well, one out of two ain't so bad. Okay. Pastor A.J., uh, thank you. Thank you for your word. I uh, was talking to him the other day as I was putting the liturgy together, and I said, do you have any hymns you like? He goes, no, not really. And then he says, but I like this one. So uh, uh, that's, exactly what that's exactly what happened. Yes. No. no. But I do like this one. So we're going to sing it. Uh, I called it peppy. He said, it's not peppy. It's melodic. So we are going to have a melodic song called You Have Come Down to the Lakeshore. It's very singable. Uh, you can sing it in Spanish if you want. You can sing it in English or whatever you want to do, Naomi. I know you're chomping at the bit to sing it in... No? Okay. No, okay. Uh, but I'm going to have uh, Emily play it through once for us so that we can get the, the hang of the tune, and then we'll go from there. Okay, Emily, if you would, please.
Jesus has come us, as Pastor A.J. had said, and confess that he is here using the words of the Apostles' Creed. So I invite you to stand as you are able. Join me in confessing our triune faith. I believe in God, the Almighty, the of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of last. Amen. Continue with the prayers of intercession. Thank you. By the way, I want to interject that that naval anthem was exceedingly well. Um, as we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. God, our rock and deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promises to the most vulnerable among us. Give your church wisdom and empathy in its varied ministry. E ka haku. God, our hope and refuge, you place the fish in the sea. Guide our care of oceans and all creatures that live in them. Hold us accountable for actions that endanger water resources water sources, and the people who depend on them. God, who proclaims judgment and offers mercy, be a model to the leaders of our nation and the world. As they lead, may they follow in your way of justice and truth. God who cares for the suffering as the martyr, Agnes, minister to victims of sexual abuse, care for survivors of assault and sexual abuse, and sustain all who minister to them. Keep safe any who live under threat of violence, those living in poverty, and any among us who are ill or in pain especially all those whom we name in our hearts and whose names we now speak aloud. For the families of Tom Herdlicka, Alice Wendell, and Father Kerry Kirkin. For Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, Bishop Michael Curry, all those with long COVID, Alice, Arturo, Dick, Dawn, Glenn, Naomi, Jean, Jim, Joanne, Kathy, Mary, Michael, Hattie, Peggy, Sam, Star, and Yvonne. God of resurrection and new life, as the first disciples share the good news Empower us and this faith community, Christ Lutheran Church, to be open to your call. When we are certain of your call, assure us. When we have strayed from your ways, redirect us. E ka haku. Remember those with birth this week, especially Pua and Nelson and Deanne and Naomi and those who are celebrating, celebrating baptismal anniversaries especially. May their days be full of laughter and life and joy. Eka haku. We remember the communion of saints, the Lutheran Church of the Holy Trinity and their proud pastor, Ryan Kaiser. May they be faithful witnesses to the Jesus who stirs among us. 
E kahaku. Holds the saints against your tender bosom. We trust you welcome them into your care. Comfort those who grieve, even as we place our hope in your salvation. E kahaku. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers in the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I have not said this for a while, um, but there's enough of you who are, who are new, newer here uh, that the Hawaiian we use is not tourist Hawaiian, but it was given as a gift to us from Father Haoli Tomoso, who is a member of the Royal Order of Kamehameha, amongst other things. And, uh, and uh, he said, Pastor Keith, you have to use this language. So I don't do it to be touristy. I do it humbly thankful for the gift of language. Aloha nui, eoko. Oke aloha, o ka haku, e mau ana meako, a pau loa. Brothers and sisters, friends and neighbors, the peace of Christ be with you always. And you know whom you can hug and whom you can wave to. You may be seated, and uh, this is almost an announcement, but it's sort of what I say at this point. And uh, the annual reports are in the back on the table for all of you to take one home. Shelby just knocked herself out this week and get, getting them ready, and I'm very grateful for that. It looks pretty good. So, so take one home and uh, look it over, and then uh, come to the annual meeting between the services uh, next Sunday. Thank you for your support, your time, your talent, and your treasure. It is being put to good use, and you will see that in the report. Emily, would you lead us in, let the vineyards be fruitful as I prepare the Lord's table. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. not hearing me right now. There we go. By the leading of a star you shone forth to all nations. By in the waters of the Jordan you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Na makana akeakua, no kapoe akeakua. The gifts of God for the people of God. E komomai, e kipamai. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all. And Emily, the body of Christ is broken for you, the blood of Christ is shed for you. And for those of you who are worshiping with us online, if at this time you have bread and wine at hand or something reasonably close, you may take it up now. And if you do not have anything at hand, you can still commune with Jesus and with this communion of saints called Christ Lutheran Church by receiving these words in faith. The body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. E pulipkako, let us pray. 
Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. An announcements. I forgot to do this at first service. We've, we've done it. We're doing it a different way. But any of the check signers, for ch you check signer, now we may need both of you to sign checks because I, I forgot to ask the folks at first service. Okay, uh, and there's a couple things we want to pay this week. So, okay, um, Christmas tree. <laughs> Anybody want to take it down after church? The Epiphany Tree. Okay, if some of you can help take it down, I, I, I appreciate it. I'm not sure where the s stuff is. Nelson or Andrew may know something about that. I'm not sure. But anyways, if we can figure that out, I'd like it down by Valentine's Day. Yeah? <laughs> Which is also Ash Wednesday, right? So, um, so after, you know, going out to an early dinner with your hot date on Valentine's Day, come here and I will put ashes on your forehead and remind you that you are but dust. How does that sound for you? That kind of fits with the sermon, doesn't it? No? Yeah, we'll keep going. Okay. None, nobody laughed. Well, I don't know. It's go cheese graters and flamethrowers things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Laugh at him, but not me. Okay. I'm moving to Florida. Okay. <laughs> You, you, are you liking it here? Are you having a good time? All right. I'm glad you're here, Jackson. I'm glad you're here. All right. And before I move to Florida, next week will be the annual meeting between services. Uh, so uh, I mentioned that already. And uh, uh, grab, grab one of these uh, annual reports. Uh, it'll make for great reading. Uh, then Adam, February 3rd is IHS, right? That evening. So the cookies can show up here. Uh, Saturday morning and afternoon and, and go from there. Giving statements are still on the back uh, and Shelby will be mailing them out if, if you don't pick them up yourself. Uh, the KK Church is back. We're, we're working it up, right? Yes, yes. Rally, rally. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, we have some garden plots available. So if any of you are of a gardening mood, you can uh, go check them out and uh, you can talk to me. Teresa's here too. And she's been helping with a bunch of stuff, too. So thank you for, for your help. Uh, and then uh, Adam and I are going to try and get a, a men's prayer breakfast going uh, at the Rise and Shine Cafe like every other month at 7 a.m. Are you awake that early? I mean, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Good. Huh? Rise and shine. Rise and shine. Yeah. With a lot of caffeine, I'll be okay. And I think that's it for the announcements. Does anybody else? have anything? Oh, AV, IT, Andrew and Kathy, uh, are, are, they really deserve uh, uh, one of those attendance pin awards for having been here three years running, uh, making sure this is going and happening, so thank you. But they could use a little help. So if any of you are, are of an AV, IT, it's easy to run. Uh, I can do it. I just, I'm, I'm working the front. But, I, you know, if I can do it, Anyone can do it, okay? So, with that in mind, Pastor AJ, would you come up here, please? We did this once already. Do you... Do you... <laughs> does the Bishop of the Florida Bahamas Synod know you're coming? Yeah. Or should I warn him? No, he knows. No, he, he knows? Okay. All right. I... Uh, First got wind of this guy on Facebook. He was on an aircraft carrier, the Dwight David Eisenhower, in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And he made this remark on a, a Lutheran clergy group, I've been assigned to Pearl Harbor. And I thought, well, what do you know? So I messaged him and said, when you get here and get settled, come on up and worship with us. And it's been, been three glorious, wonderful years. And it has been a joy. That Sunday you showed up dressed as Martin Luther? That we had fun. We had fun. Remember that? It was, yeah, yeah. So we wished to offer farewell and Godspeed. And I hope I get through this. The Lord be with you. 
Pastor AJ, as you leave Christ Lutheran Church, we wish to bid you farewell. A reading from John. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, even in Florida. In holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you a member of his church. When you came to Christ Lutheran Church, we truly rejoiced to welcome you into the mission we share as the people of God here. And in this communion of saints, you have come to know and to share in God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. And God has blessed you in this community, and God has blessed us through you. E pule kako, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the work and witness of your servant, Pastor AJ, who has enriched Christ Lutheran Church and shared his gifts with us here as family and friends. Now bless and preserve him at this time of transition. Day by day, guide him and give him what is needed. Friends to cheer him on the way and a clear vision of that to which you are now calling him. By your Holy Spirit, be present in his pilgrimage that he may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Would you bless us one more time? Yep. I'll hold it. No, I got, oh, got it. it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and now may the God who leads us in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over us and who calls us by name, bless our going out and our coming in today and forever. Amen. Amen. And we'll sing our sending song sent forth by God's blessing. Wait, one, oh, what? No. I forgot something. Get back here. We, we, we have some cards that we signed, and we still have cake out there. Yes. Yeah, so the there's a stay for the cake, okay? All right. Now, Emily.